Um, my name is Colette Heald. I am an assistant professor in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering here at MIT, and I also have a second appointment in the Earth, Atmospheric, and Planetary Sciences Department. Um, I'm an atmospheric chemist, and so my research is really focused on what is in the atmosphere, um, how it's emitted, how it's transformed chemically in the atmosphere, and also physically transported, and then ultimately its impacts on the environment. Um, so those impacts can be very large scale, um, thinking about how particles and gases interact with um, radiation and how that affects the Earth's uh, balance in terms of climate change. Um, it can also be related to um, more local scale issues, so air quality and pollution, um, and as well as um, the role that the atmosphere plays interacting with the biosphere. So um, deposition of things from the atmosphere can be both a positive thing. Um, so we have, for example, dust coming from North Africa, which is a huge source of nutrients to the Amazon. And so we're interested in studying you know, how that happens and, and what that impact is. Um, but we also have the downside of the atmospheric deposition problem, which is something like acid rain. So for all of those reasons, we're targeting looking at atmospheric composition and how it evolves um, and the connections between the biosphere and the atmosphere. And those are the kinds of questions that I'm interested in working on. Um, so the tools that we use in my research are largely modeling um, tools to try and interpret what we see. So a model is basically our best understanding of what we think is happening in a system. And so in the case of um, the composition of the atmosphere, we have models that you know, simulate all of the winds and the transport of um, different chemical species in the atmosphere. But then we also want to simulate the chemistry that's important. And so um, that happens on a whole variety of timescales, so very short timescales and very large timescales. And this makes it a challenge to sort of think about the coupled process of transport and chemistry happening at the same time in the atmosphere. So we use these models and we um, bring them together to look at all of these processes and try to understand really the global impact of what's in the atmosphere and the transformations that are going on. And that is actually really tightly coupled to looking at observations. And so um, there's a whole scale of observations from lab studies to field work focusing on different aspects of understanding the chemical evolution of the atmosphere. And um, we work with collaborators, both at MIT and in the larger community, to try and understand what those observations tell us about what might be missing in our big picture understanding of atmospheric chemistry. So if we take the model and we compare it to, let's say, a field campaign in a certain location, or maybe a whole suite of field campaigns, and get some big picture you know, understanding of what is evolving, what do those processes look like, and whether our simplified view that we have integrated in a model is really capturing the main features of what is actually happening in the atmosphere. And so we spend a lot of time working with these folks to try and interpret their data. Um, and that, as I said, that comes from all scales. So from surface measurements, from aircraft measurements, and also from satellite measurements. And satellite measurements is particularly a useful tool since a lot of the questions that my group is interested in is quite, uh, are quite large scale. So going from regional to intercontinental to even global scales. And so satellites offer um, you know, this unprecedented view, which is constant um, and global. And that can really help answer questions, particularly for regions that are not well observed. So we think about transport of pollution across ocean basins, where you know, we don't have ground stations making those observations in those locations. And so satellite observations become particularly valuable. So we try and take an integrated kind of perspective in my group and that kind of research of understanding what the role of the atmosphere's composition is in terms of all of these large-scale environmental problems.